Hello and welcome to this session. And in this session, we will be discussing about the package in R called Dplyr. In previous session that we had started off learning the entire package of Dplyr in R, I mentioned that it's one of the most powerful packages to analyze, clean, summarize your data. Okay, so all those people who were fascinated with MySQL and all, once you get into Dplyr and you see the power of Dplyr, then you would definitely appreciate how the complex things could be simplified because Dplyr has been built for the purpose of data analysis, data cleaning. Okay, so the functionalities of Dplyr are quite intuitive, quite easy to remember. So moving ahead. Yesterday, we learned how to make some random samples, but today I'm going to take you through a very simple, exciting and important function called the select function in dplyr. So all those people who do not have this package, please install this package. That is dplyr. OK, so how do you install install dot packages in brackets dplyr comma dependencies equals true. OK. Uh, I already have this package, so I will start with the library. And this is the data that I'm using. I'll share this link. Okay, this is a data file from GitHub, so you can easily download that. But I'll share this link in the description of the video. You can download this data from there and you can start using. So I've named this entire data as my data. And then just to have a glimpse of my data, I just want to eyeball my data. This is what this data looks like. Okay. I have certain number of columns. The column names are index, date, years, okay, and so on. So if I just want to know how many observations and how many variables I'm dealing with, so I check the dimensions, then I get to know that there are 51 observations and 16 variables, okay. Since I'm selecting, okay, let us try to understand the purpose of select, okay. So the uh, function, the core function that we are going to learn today is the select function. So the purpose is either I select a few variables with certain criteria or I drop a few variables. So for that reason, I need to know the names of my variables, right? So for that reason, I'm just running this names, my data, and it gives me all the names of the variables in my data. Okay. You can also use the function call names. That also is fine. Like uh, call names, my data. You get the same thing. Okay. Not an issue at all. So now let us move. I have around six learning outcomes from today's session. OK, so let us go one by one. The first learning outcome I have is learn to select variables from a data frame. A few data variables. Let us say I have around uh, how many? I think uh, we had around. Let us check the dimensions. I think we had 16 variables. OK. Now, let's say I need a small subset. I don't need all the 16 variables. I just need around two to three variables to run a small analysis. OK, so for that reason, let us say in this example that I'm taking, I just want to select the variables. OK, now here I just want to select. Select the variables. What are the variables like index, comma, state, and Y2015, the income in the year 2015. OK, so how do I do it? OK, I simply create an object called cell one. You can name it in whichever way you want. And then I use the select function, select within which the first element. OK, the first argument that I use in this function is my data. My data is the parent data file that you have to use from which you need to subset. So this is the data file. OK, my data from which I need only three columns, that is index, state and this Y, that is year 2015. OK, so run this. And then you just check the head. OK, I just want to see the top six rows. And more importantly, I need to just see how my data looks like. See, this is the thing that I've done. I took only index, then the state, then the year. So index, state, year. These are the three columns that I have. Quite simple, right? So compared to the base functions or the base commands in R, this uh, using the select function is quite simple, quite easy, quite handy. And more importantly, 
it's quite intuitive to remember okay that's very important and then moving on to the second learning outcome now the previously i taught you or i told you how to select certain variables now i'm going to tell you how to drop a few variables now let's say i need to drop for instance let us say drop index and y2002 year 2002 okay so what you need to do is just put a minus sign the way you selected if you want to drop them just put a minus sign before those variables okay so what happens is you will get a subset except these variables okay so in this case like a i'm creating cell 2 now i run this so i get the entire data frame except these two okay so index and 2002 would be missing okay let's see index is missing 2002 is missing it's starting with 2003 okay in other way like uh, if you want to just check the dim earlier i had 16 columns now i have dropped two so i should uh, i should get how many 16 minus 2 is 14 right 51 observations 14 columns okay Another way of doing the same thing could be like, let us say I'm creating something called cell. This was 2B, let us say. I'm creating an object called cell 2B is equals, okay, select my data, comma. You can put a minus sign and put a C and then within the C, write whatever you want. Index, comma, Y, 2000. Two, fine. So you have created an object. Just want to check head or maybe dim. Okay, cell to be. Okay. Now again, I have dropped these two variables. So the same thing you could do with a C function as well. Okay. Got the point. Moving ahead. The third learning outcome. Okay. Now selecting variables starting with a particular alphabet. Okay. So if you wish to select only those variables which start with a particular alphabet okay in this uh, particular data you have seen there are a lot of variables which start with y okay y 2002 2003 2004 and so on okay so for instance let us say i want to select all those variables starting with y so simple now i create an object called cell 3 so select okay this is the function we are learning today select my data that's your parent data file simple you have a very handy function okay uh, within select uh, or dplyr starts with okay so starts with put the alphabet it starts with okay so in my case i'm taking the alphabet y okay so for instance i'm saying starts with alphabet y so run this and then you check the head and then you see you have only those variables which start with y okay so all the years so you have dropped the index and the state fine simple so now dropping the variable starts with let us say now i selected the variable starting with y in this case i will drop the variable starting with y fine now let's see select the same thing my data now minus 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 is drop okay so minus starts with alphabet y check okay head now you see all the year columns have vanished i have index and state quite simple right Moving ahead, learning outcome five, selecting variables that contain, okay, it's not starting with, I'm now moving with contains, which contains, okay, some alphabet in their names. Now, let's say in our case, let's say I want to uh, take all the variables which contain I in their names, okay. Now, remember, this is not case sensitive, okay. So, it can be I in caps and I in small, it will consider both, okay. So, I'm creating an object called cell 5 select my data and contains contains see this okay this is a helper function starts with ends with contains all these are helper functions so now contains i okay now run this it will give you all the variables which contain i okay so there's only one uh, one okay one variable which contains i that's index rest of the things don't contain right simple that's the reason i have taken i okay then 
Now comes the reordering of variables. So I have a data frame where the variables or the columns are arranged in a particular fashion, but probably I want to have one kind of or one variable at the front okay so that you know rest of the things should match with that i want to match the remaining things with that particular variable so i just want to pull that column at the leftmost corner or something i want to mess around or i want to manipulate my data frame that way okay so for instance now right now i want to reorder my variables okay so i'm creating an object called cell six okay so select is the function we are learning select this is my data my data now let's say my data starts with index but i want it to start with state okay then i say state then i say index okay even if you don't say index not a problem okay uh, just to show you that two or more columns can also be rearranged that's the reason i have taken index okay so state index and everything okay just say everything okay so first you'll get state then you get index and then you put everything so this is the sequence that you'll get so first you will get state, then you'll get index, then you will get y 2002, y 2003 and so on. Okay. Going ahead with this. Now you see your data frame. Okay. First you have your state, then you have your index, then you have your years. Fine. So I hope you liked this video. You found this useful and informative. Do like, share and subscribe to my channel. Spread the good word about it. Thank you once again.